Hey everybody, it's Rob with Cherry City Guns and Ammo, and I'm really excited for today's video. I'm shooting my new Marlin Model 1895 SBL, chambered in 4570. <laughs> Stick around. Once again, Marlin 1895 SBL. If you're not familiar with this rifle and you've seen the movie Jurassic World, it's the same model that Chris Pratt carries in that movie. Uh, but what's cool about this, is this is one of the new Ruger made models. Uh, if you don't know the history, for a long time Marlin was owned by Remington and they were the main, main ones producing this, this gun, uh, this particular model for several years. There were some quality control issues um, with the Model 1895s. And then when Remington went bankrupt and all, it, all of its subsidiary companies were all broken up and sold off, Ruger purchased Marlin. And just now, these the new Ruger made Marlins are finally actually starting to make it out into uh, the hands of the general public and I was lucky enough to purchase one. Not lucky enough, I just I was in the right place at the right time and I actually got it for a really good deal. And I've really been wanting a 4570 for a long time. And one reason I want this model particularly is it is threaded. This is a Silencer Co. ASR muzzle brake. I added it on here. Um, I've got a Silencer Co. 46M silencer that is currently awaiting ATF approval. And so that'll make it so I can just slip that si suppressor directly over top of this muzzle brake and lock her down. Um, it does help with the recoil. I should have maybe done a few shots with it not on there, um, but it's all thread locked on. It's not going anywhere. And then on top it comes, or I have it set up with the Vortex Strike Eagle 1 to 4. Um, I'll maybe see if I can look online and find a little image of the reticle to show you what this thing looks like. But it's a 1 to 4 power, and when you're down on 1 power and you actually have the illumination on, it's almost kind of like using a red dot versus a scope. But you still are, have the ability to crank it up to 8 power. and. Uh, see some further away stuff at a, at a decent magnification. Uh, this model does come with the rail um, and it has a peep sight. I had to remove the peep sight to have clearance for my scope. Um, if you go red dot you wouldn't have to do that or if you did like a scout sto scope type situation, you know like a pistol type scope that can be mounted further forward that has longer eye relief, you could leave your peep sight on there. I wasn't worried about it, I just took it off, put it in a baggie, put it in a box. And it does come with the hammer extension, which when you do have a regular scope on there, it definitely helps to be able to get a hold of the hammer. Um, and it does have a larger loop. And what's great for me is I do plan on hunting with this gun. And I live in Northwestern Oregon, and we tend to be quite wet here during the fall, during hunting season. So the idea of laminate and stainless is very appealing because they do well with the kind of weather that I will be hunting with, in, with this gun in. So that all the way let's do some more shooting we're gonna go out to a little further distance because i don't really want to beat the absolute crap out of uh my my pistol targets here so we're gonna run out here to eight or 60 yards you got that silhouette at 60 yards um and then there's two plates next to it uh i'm not gonna be surprised if i knock my silhouette off the bracket this is quite powerful but let's go for the silhouette Nice. Let's go for the red 10 inch plate that's to the left of it. Boy, it really hits with some authority. Okay, immediately to the right of that red 10 inch plate, we've got a six inch green plate. <laughs> All right, this is my last shot before I have to reload again. Let's, uh, Let's go out there to 100. You got that backstop right there, that big red silhouette is at 100 yards. Let's see if we can pop it offhand at 100. I'm gonna turn up the magnification real quick. Go up to eight power. And I missed it. Hold on, I got it around in my pocket. I, I will tell you right now, I yard on the trigger. That was me, not the rifle. 
think I missed it again. I can't tell. Maybe it's getting there fast enough and hitting it that I can't hear the ring. Oh yeah, there we go. So I missed it the first two times. Slow down, Rob. Okay, immediately to the left of that silhouette, I've got a head. And it's the size and shape of a human head. It's AR550 steel. Let's see if I can hit the head. There we go. So, headshots at 100 yards are possible with this. Missed the head. I think I shot right underneath it. All right, we're gonna go for the head again. There we go. Not bad. I did some shooting off the bench. I may I may do a little shooting off the bench later on in this video. Um, but I think I was getting close to about an inch group, which with this type of, of uh, optics setup, I think is pretty darn good. Uh, so far, I'm really liking it. Um, I don't have a comparison for recoil because I didn't shoot this at all without the muzzle brake. But I'll tell you right now, with this muzzle brake on, the recoil is very tame. Um, I think I took about 14 shots getting it sighted in. Um, I'm at least a full box plus through there at this point. And uh, shoulder's good. It does have a nice recoil pad on the back. Uh, but really, this seems pretty tame. I think this is something that you really could shoot a pretty decent amount uh, without taking a lot of punishment. So I think I'm going to go set up with this, the scope cam and uh, do some shots on paper at 100 with this setup and uh, see what kind of groups we need out of it. We'll be right back. All right, we're set up on the lead sled at 100 yards. I've got my camera, my phone scope going here. We've got a fresh target down there. So we're just going to see how this groups at 100 yards. I have it up on 8 power. First we're going to do a uh, group with this Grizzly brand uh, 4570 300 grain Kodiak jacketed hollow point bonded core. Show that to you. Hopefully you can see that. Um, it says that it's uh, 1500 feet per second, 1499 foot pounds of energy. So we're just going to load these in one at a time. I am recording, so you should be able to see that up in your corner, the image from my scope cam. So that one looks about an inch and a quarter high, an inch and a quarter right. I will tell you one thing I, I don't like is it has a rather heavy trigger pull. It's crisp, which is good, but it is rather heavy. I would prefer a little bit lighter trigger pull. And that shot is just about an inch above the last, which right now I'm not, I'm not really all that worried about where on the paper it's hitting. We're just looking at the group size what kind of groups this is capable of shooting. And that made, oh wait. So that one is about an inch to the left of the last shot. You know what, let's just make this a five shot group. I like five shot groups. Lots of times people do three shot groups, but five shots tells you more, I think. That one cut the first hole. I think that is 
touching the first and fourth hole. You guys will be able to tell better on the video. Um, you know, those are all one inch squares. And before the end of the video, I will actually go and measure those. But I'm saying that we've got about an inch and a half spread there, which considering it's a lever action, short barrel, and really with this type of optics and, and, and reticle, it's really more made about, it's more about quick target acquisition than it is about really fine precision shooting. Um, I think that's that's pretty darn good. Um, we could maybe find something a little bit better with hand loads or maybe a different ammo, which we have another ammo here that we'll test. We'll do more more testing here. This is some Hornady Levolution. It's a 325 grain FTX bullet. The FT FTX is the little flex tip there. And for velocity, these are rated at 2,000 feet per second. So it's be cooking along, you know, quite a bit quicker. Um, so this might hit substantially higher than that last stuff. So that last stuff, we're just going for dead center. I think on this one we're going to go for that lower left dot. Uh, low because I think this is going to shoot a little bit higher uh, because of its lighter, or I mean it's higher velocity. And then since it's seeming to, it's shooting a little bit left, that'll help keep it in the paper there. So let's go for that lower left dot, actually. You know what, before we go, I'm going to pause the video and we're going to give this just a minute to cool because I, I want to have a fairly cool barrel between groups to really give it a, a, a fair shake. So we're going to pause we'll be right back. Alrighty, we are nice and cool so we can give uh, this Hornady Levolution ammo its best chance at uh, performing well. Get my scope cam going. So once again, we're going to go for that lower left bull. Um, this stuff's traveling a little faster, so it will probably hit a little higher. And plus, since we're kind of trending right, let's see how this stuff does. Oh, I hit way high. Holy cow. Took me a minute to find it. Yeah, that makes a huge difference on where it hits. So left and right, we're really good. But we are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten inches high. So that extra 500 feet per second definitely seems to make a difference. And also, so this is a 325 grain bullet that's rated at 2,000 feet per second. This Grizzly stuff was 300 grain, so a lighter bullet at 1,500 feet per second. This stuff definitely has more recoil. It's still really comfortable to shoot. It still does not hurt, but there definitely is a higher amount of recoil. So yeah, obviously we're hitting far higher with this stuff, um, but we're gonna keep shooting. We're not gonna make any adjustments because once again, we don't really care where we're hitting. We're just seeing how it groups, so. So that's about an inch to the right of the last one. Again, right at the edge of the paper. There's definitely a significant difference in this ammo. kind of interesting so that hole looks kind of elongated and I can't tell if that means that it key hold or maybe if it's because there's a hole in the plywood directly behind it that kind of tore weird that's interesting not sure what the deal is with that I'm not concerned about it I think that one just went in the same hole as the last one. And 
That one, that hole also looks kind of weird. That's kind of interesting. I will go up and measure the target later so I can give you an actual report on how tight a group it's shooting. But for you know, lever gun at 100 yards with this type of optic, I really, I'm not displeased at all. That's maybe, at most, about an inch and a half group, which really isn't bad. Had a couple holes that are kind of elongated, strangely. Um, so I'm not really sure what that's about. But yeah, um, even though this stuff is obviously a, a touch hotter, uh, with this muzzle brake on it, it still seems rather pleasant to shoot. It's a beautiful gun. The fit and finish on these Ruger made Marlins is far better than the old Remingtons. Um, one of the ways that you can tell that it is a new made Ruger, if you are, are in the market and you're looking at one, is if you look on this side of the barrel, it says Marlin, Myodin, North Carolina. And for a long time, Ruger has been making a lot of their rifles in Myodin, North Carolina. So that's one of the easiest telltale signs, whether it is an actual Ruger manufactured Marlin or if it was one of the old Remington ones. And the other thing that makes it obvious is if you look at the serial number, and I'm not going to show you mine because it's none of your business, but they start with RM, Ruger Marlin. You could say that was Remington Marlin, but the Remington Marlins didn't start with RM. I believe it was all just numbers, where this is RM followed by a series of numbers. So, just another way you can tell that it's one of the Ruger made Marlins. And actually, there's one more. For a long time, for many, many years, the Marlins have the bullseye on the bottom of the stock. It's the white with the black dot. The new Ruger ones, it's white with a red dot. So, that's just another telltale way to know if you if you're dealing with it, one of the new Ruger made ones or not so so far for my first time shooting this gun I'm really really happy uh, it seems to be a joy to shoot and I think I'm gonna have fun with it for a long time to gun to come I can't wait to get the suppressor for it and throw the suppressor on I think that's gonna be super cool hopefully I'll have it here in the next couple of months and uh, I will definitely throw a video up <laughs> shooting this with that on it so make sure you're subscribed so you see any of the videos that come out on this in the future. And uh, thanks for watching, folks. Have a good rest of your day. All right, here's taking a look at the, uh, the target from the, uh, the Marlin. The Levolution, it definitely shot way high because I was actually aiming here. Shot way up here. Believe it or not, that is three holes, um, which I think is pretty amazing. No, I'm sorry, that's two holes. It's this one that's three holes. So the Levolution, two holes there, hole, hole, hole. Um, and these are center to center. That's two and a quarter inch center to center. And this way is 1.6. It didn't shoot great, but you have to keep in consideration this is a 200 yard rifle and the optics on it aren't made for like high precision. The Grizzly shot really well. That's three shots. But with these that went out there, this measurement at max is 1.25. This was 1.68. Um, we'll definitely do some more shooting, try some different loads. We're going to be trying some hand loads and be doing some cast stuff with it. It'll be inter interesting to see how it, uh, how it progresses. But, you know, this is a 200 yard at max gun. That's just how the caliber is. It's not meant for high precision, long range, no matter what the old westerns tell you. Uh, for what it's designed for, though, it's super powerful. And, I mean, that's really what it's about. So I'm, I'm really happy for my first outing with this. I feel like it shot well, and uh, we'll keep you up to date with more stuff in the future.